everyone. Thanks for those that are already on the call. Just want to let you know we're just going to give people another minute or two to join. Um, so I'll just be sharing a couple photos while we wait to get started. So just give it a, another minute or two. For those that have just joined us, just wanted to let you know we're just giving it um, probably one more minute and then we'll go ahead and get started. So just sharing a couple of photos in the meantime. Okay, so just a couple minutes past the hour, so um, we're going to go ahead and get started. So hello everyone, uh, welcome and thanks for joining us today. If you're passionate about transportation, you've come to the right place. My name is Kelly and I'm one of the hosts for today's webinar on internships at Kittleson. So we're going to start with some quick introductions. Um, each of today's presenters is going to share more of their background and their connection to the internship program as we go. But I wanted to give you a first uh, quick intro. So again, my name is Kelly. I'm in our Portland office. I'm going to provide some more background on Kittleson and the type of work we do. I'll then hand it over to Megan in our Boston office, who's going to provide an overview of our intern program followed by JD, one of our great interns from the summer of 2022 in Orlando, who's gonna share about her experiencing experience interning with Kittleson. And lastly, Mark in our Boise office is going to talk about how to express interest in an internship with Kittleson and what we look for in our intern. So some of you might've been on our webinar last week, uh, which talked about career paths and transportation offered job searching tips and provided background on Kittleson's culture and values. However, if you didn't catch the webinar, you can find the recording on our website and we'll also drop a link to the webinar in the chat. I also wanted to note that uh, our website is another great resource, specifically the page on internships. It's a great place to learn more about our internship program, the type of work we do, and our different offices. I especially enjoy perusing the ideas page on our website, which always has new information and hosts a variety of blog articles authored by Kittleson staff. The articles cover new technologies, unique approaches to solving transportation problems, and ideas on how to keep the industry moving forward. I especially enjoyed a recent article on e-bikes and equity, and I encourage you to check it out. So I already provided a bit of a roadmap for today's conversation, but I wanted to note that we're going to save about 30 minutes at the end of the call for our open discussion. We already got some great questions ahead of time, but you can continue to submit questions anytime during the presentation. I'm going to be keeping track of those and we'll get to as many of them as we can. So before we really get started, I'd like to ask a few questions to learn more about the people on the call. So I'll be using the built-in poll on the webinar platform, so you should be able to answer these questions as they come up. So to start us off, what is your current level, oops, what is your current level in school? So I'll give you just a moment to respond 
Um, so you should be able to, to enter your answers. Oops, I think I might have a little bit of technical difficulty and not giving people the opportunity to answer. So I'm gonna go ahead and move to the next question. Sorry about that. We'll have to, we'll have to find that out afterwards. So instead I'm going to ask, what is your field of study? So you can see we only had the chance to offer a couple different options. So I expect a number of you might fall into that other category. Um, but we'll give you um, a couple more moments to respond. Okay, it looks like we've had 80% of people voted. So I'll just give it another few more seconds. Okay, we're at a pretty good response rate. So go ahead and close it and share the responses. So as you can see, um, more than half of you in engineering, but also have a good portion of planners and then some folks in math and science and then also other. Um, great to see a pretty good variety of people on the call. And um, we'll talk about this more when we really get into the presentation, but we have a pretty big variety of people here at Kittleson too and really value that um, variety and that diversity. So great to see that here today as well. And then one more question, I'm going to ask, uh, what are you most looking to get out of an internship? So you can see there's five options there. I expect a lot of you might be looking for more than one of these things. So just choose what one you'd say is the most important to you. Okay, I'll just give it a couple more moments. Looks like most of you had already voted. Okay, go ahead and share those results. So again, some good variety here. Um, the majority of folks noting insights into a future career or new skills and experience. That's, that's great to see and I really encourage you to keep this in mind, not just as you listen to today's presentation, but as you pursue other opportunities and really think about um, what are you looking for and how does the internship program match up to that. So yeah, great to get some more insights. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and go back to the presentation and we'll really get into the, the presentation. So like I noted, I'm gonna start us off by providing a short introduction to Kittleson. But before I do that, I wanted to tell you a little bit more about myself and my connection to our internship program. So I majored in civil and environmental engineering at the University of Virginia. And I started my career with Kittleson after I graduated in the fall of 2011. Uh, here at Kittleson, I work on a big range of projects, including long-range planning projects, safety studies, research, and helping agencies develop their manuals. I got involved with our internship program early on in my time at Kittleson, helping plan and organize elements of the program that you'll hear more about today. I really love the energy and enthusiasm that interns bring to Kittleson, and I look forward to the summer each year and the chance to meet a new class of interns. So to tell you a little bit more about Kittleson, we're a multimodal transportation firm filled with transportation enthusiasts. Uh, one of my favorite things about folks at Kittleson is how excited we get about experiencing new transportation systems. As an example, I was in Nashville with a few others for a work trip a couple weeks ago. We spent much of our time while walking or Ubering around talking about how the airport organizes its rideshare pickup and transit options for navigating downtown, and we loved admiring all the bike share stations. We're truly passionate about transportation and approach new ideas with curiosity. Here at Kittleson, we have a little over five, or excuse me, 300 people. And we bring perspectives from all over the world, representing over 20 countries on six continents. Our diverse perspectives are based not only on where we're from, but also our path to get here. Staff at Kittleson have backgrounds in traditional transportation fields like engineering and planning, but also a wide range of disciplines, including public health, mathematics, and graphic design. This is not a coincidence. As transportation professionals, we really value diversity. It's these differences that allow us to view our projects from different lenses and serve our communities as best as possible. 
It's great to have a variety of folks on today's call, and as we'll talk about a little bit more later in the presentation, our intern class usually represents folks from a variety of backgrounds. Our staff are spread out over 25 offices in 13 states, as shown here on the screen. Our oldest and largest office is in Portland, Oregon, where I'm based, which was founded in 1985. Our offices range in size from a few people to nearly 90 people here in Portland. Our operating philosophy is one firm, many locations. This means we don't form project teams based on geography, but instead on interest and skill sets. We're often asked how we make decisions about where to establish new offices. Our philosophy has always been follow our people. We hire passionate, motivated professionals and give them flexibility to pursue their interests. This naturally leads us into new markets and new practice areas. One of the things that first attracted me to Kittleson is our values and our purpose. I remember someone at Kittleson telling me during my interview process that the best way to learn about a company is not to ask them what their values are, but to ask them to show you how they put their values into practice. Our internship program at Kittleson is a tangible representation of our purpose and our values. The three statements shown on the screen describe our purpose at Kittleson. I'm going to walk through them each quickly. First, to create and sustain a lifelong learning environment for all staff. Mentorship provides a valuable opportunity for our staff to grow, and we believe that there is no better way to learn than by teaching. Second, our purpose is to increase the value and contributions of our profession. The goal of our internship program is to prepare interns for a career in transportation, whatever form that takes. We think it's important to give future professionals real project experience and opportunities for growth and development. Many of our interns go on to become our future peers, colleagues, partners, and clients. And lastly, we strive, strive to provide the opportunity for the independent success of every employee. Our internship experience is an opportunity for emerging professionals to gain paid experience and supports their ability to make informed future career decisions. We consider an internship successful when someone learns more about what they want to do with their career, whether that leads them to transportation consulting or down another path. Lastly, I wanted to share a little bit more about the type of work that we do here at Kittleson. We work on private and public projects that generally fall under the umbrella of research, planning, design, and operations. Often, a project will touch on multiple aspects of transportation or it might transition from one type of project to another. We don't limit people to one type of work or organize ourselves into departments or divisions. Although my academic background is in engineering, I've worked on many planning projects and enjoyed the chance to follow my interests and passions. The list on the right side of the screen isn't intended to be comprehensive, but instead to give you an example of some of the types of projects we do. You can read more about specific projects we worked on on our website. Our expertise and project areas are always growing as transportation evolves. I'm now going to turn it over to Megan to tell you a little bit more about our internship program. Thanks, Kelly. Hi, everyone. I'm Megan Mello, and I'm really excited to be here tonight. I am a planner in our Boston office, but I was also a previous intern in the Oakland, California office. Uh, that was back in summer 2019 when I was in grad school for urban and environmental policy and planning. I came to this field from a background in environmental science and before coming to consulting, I tried the academic and startup side of transportation, but now I mostly work on projects related to bicycle and pedestrian planning, safety and design. And this past summer, I was also able to serve as an intern mentor here in Boston. So. I really learned and benefited from this program in multiple ways. I think one of the best ways to really learn about Kittleson and, in my opinion, the broader transportation field is through our internship program. So each year we hire about 15 to 20 students from universities around the country to be a part of this program. And we hire interns from both undergraduate and graduate degree programs. So in the past, we've had interns ranging from incoming college freshmen all the way to PhD students. 
And similarly, our interns majors are, are across a broad spectrum. So we do have interns studying things like civil engineering and city and regional planning, but we also have had interns in the past who have been studying education, history, and geography, to name a few. And as we saw in the polls, people have varied backgrounds and are all interested in and passionate about transportation. So that's really the common thread between all of our interns. Each intern is assigned to one of our offices. Seen here in blue are the offices where we hosted interns in summer 2022. For me personally, I loved being able to intern in a part of the country that I wasn't as familiar with. I was living in Boston at the time and moved across to California for three months. But we do work with our interns to decide on a location that's going to work well for both of us, whether that's down the street from where they already live or across the country. While most interns will be the only intern in their office, we do like to think of each group as a class and we provide lots of opportunities for interns to interact with each other, which we'll talk about in a minute. Each intern is paired with one to two mentors and these mentors help the intern get settled at the beginning of the summer, kind of learn the, the ins and outs of Kittleson and then also help them um, manage their workload and other Kittleson related activities and just be a person that they can go to with any questions. There are a lot of elements to our intern program. We really do try to pack in as much as possible in the 12 weeks that we have. Overall, our interns operate pretty similarly to entry-level staff. So they'll spend the majority of their time working on projects. So that is going to include things like software analysis, sometimes going out in the field, technical writing, producing graphics or maps, but also might include meeting with clients, going to uh, public engagement uh, meetings, and working on projects and work sessions with Kittleson staff. Interns will typically work most closely with their mentor and others in their home office on projects, but it's pretty common for interns to also work outside of their office and region. When it comes to managing workload, we really do empower our interns to kind of take charge of that. Um, mentors are always going to be there to help, but our interns are really encouraged to uh, ma make sure that they can manage their own time well and also to seek out new project opportunities on their own. Interns are exposed to other Kittleson staff in a few ways. So we have interactive technical training sessions scheduled throughout the summer. And these are usually led by one to two Kittleson staff and cover topics such as traffic operations, Kittleson history, or emerging technology like micromobility. We also encourage interns and also encourage full-time staff even to set up things called meet and greets. And that's really a, a, just a set period of time to speak with someone that you're interested in speaking with at the firm. And it's an opportunity to learn more about what projects they might be working on, how they found themselves in the transportation consulting field, and to offer any advice. I'm still scheduling meet and greets a few years into full-time work here at Kittleson. Um, then we also, like I mentioned, provide opportunities for interns to interact every week. So we have weekly group check-in meetings, um, as well as the intern summit, which we're going to talk in about in just a minute. When we put all that together, our inter internship program really includes a little bit of everything. So obviously there's a heavy focus on technical work and gaining those project skills through our four main disciplines, but there's also plenty of time carved out for developing professional skills and creating personal connections. We consider an internship to be successful if the intern comes out of their summer with a real understanding of what it means to be a transportation consultant, but even more importantly, a clearer idea of what they want out of their career path. And like Kelly said, that might not include consulting or transportation at all, and that's okay. The last thing that I do wanna highlight is our intern summit. And for many interns, uh, it's really the highlight of the summer. I know it was for me. This is an opportunity to interact face-to-face -face with other interns as well as other Kittleson staff. So the Intern Summit is a time when we actually bring all of the interns to one office together. Um, and it includes a variety of sessions over the course of several days. So we'll have some, some workshops, um, some sessions with Kittleson leadership. We'll often go out into the field and provide opportunities to interact with 
interns at local public agencies in that city. And it's even included tours of significant transportation facilities like bridges and trams. Uh, when I was an intern, we had our summit in Portland and some of my favorite things were going on a biking tour of the city and driving out to the Columbia River Gorge, which was just amazing. I also loved being able to see how the, the Kittleson, uh, the sort of the essence of Kittleson transcended office locations. I was able to see how people in the Portland office really upheld a lot of the values I was seeing in Oakland and vice versa. So with that, I am going to pass it off to JD to talk a little bit about a day in the life as an intern. Thanks, Megan. Hello, everyone. Again, my name is JD, and I was part of the 2022 summer intern cohort based out of the Orlando office. Every intern's experience is a little different based on their interests and location, but I'm here to give you a sneak peek into what your day-to-day -day might look like at Kittleson. And what you see playing now is a TikTok video that the Orlando interns and Michael from our creative services team collaborated on. Just pretend you hear the office theme playing in the background. As you can see, we had a lot of fun making the video and I still have a bunch of bloopers that I plan to use to lovingly make fun of Aziz and Dennis in 10 years time. So a little bit about me, I am currently finishing up my master's in urban and regional planning at the University of Central Florida, go Knights. My background is in environmental studies, psychology and sustainability. I've worked a lot at the City of Orlando, uh, nonprofit organizations such as the Society Library and a community planning firm as a GIS analyst. It was during my time as president of Urban Nights, uh, a student organization for emerging planners at UCF, that I started interacting with people who worked at Kittleson. We hosted a few guest lectures and panels with Kittleson staff, and I started to delve deeper into the work that Kittleson does, scanning their website, Instagram, and LinkedIn. In a way, you could say that I swiped right on Kittleson and started chatting about how our interests aligned. Once I got started, I got to meet my mentor, Sagal Kamranati, for the first time, and we instantly clicked. She's the absolute best. I also had a larger support network at Kittleson that I could turn to for questions. Uh, since I had a lot of the same responsibilities as entry-level staff, I also bonded with people who had been working at Kittleson for a couple months to a year, and I cannot express enough how they've helped me throughout my internship. In addition, I was challenged to develop my technical skills and to take ownership of the work I was doing. I got more exposure to advanced GIS work, started learning CAD, which I had never really touched in undergrad or in my grad program, Synchro for signal timing, and Illustrator to be able to tell a better story. Using these skills and combining them with what I could bring to the table, I've been able to work on several projects throughout the summer. One of, uh, some of my favorites have been working on the City of Tampa's mobility plan, which included lots of GIS work uh, and illustrator work. FDOT District 7's 56th Street quarter study, which involved a lot of public engagement. And finally, City Bike in my hometown, New York City, creating base maps for surveyors and designers to create the docking stations that you see around. One of my favorite technical sessions uh, was Jessica Jocelyn's presentation on personal growth, which covered career goals and lifelong learning. My biggest takeaway from that session was the importance of managing work and personal life commitments so that you don't face burnout, especially in the consulting realm. Finally, the million dollar question, what does a day in the life of a Kittleson intern look like? For me, my days usually consisted of working on a couple projects at once or maybe a whole day committed to focusing on getting one task done. Zooming out to a week, I scheduled two to three meet and greets, attended technical sessions, had mentor and intern group check-ins, but the majority of my time was spent on project work. I was really able to take initiative in creating my schedule based on available project work and the topics that I was interested in. To wrap up, the interns took over a all staff meeting at the end of the summer and we showcased these numbers um, that you see on the screen. We were a fairly diverse group and it was during the intern summit that was based in Orlando this year where we all truly bonded. 
I still keep in touch with a lot of the summer interns now, and we're all excited to see where everyone ends up. I'm happy to answer any questions in the Q&A session, but for now, I'll hand it over to Mark. Thanks, JD. So after hearing all of this, if you're still interested in pursuing an internship at Kittleson, I'll be talking a little bit about what we're looking for in candidates, the application process, and what the actual hiring process looks like. But before I jump into that, I'd like to take a second to introduce myself. My name is Mark Heisinger. I'm originally from Northern California, and obtained my bachelor's degree in civil engineering from Cal Poly San Luis Obispo. Go Mustangs. I've worked at Kittleson in our Boise, Idaho office for about five years now. Um, and I generally work on a mix of traffic operations and long range planning projects. While I didn't intern at Kittleson myself, I have mentored interns and played a role in organizing the internship program. So I'm excited to share my perspective with the group here today. So I'll start off by highlighting what we look for in, in candidates for the internship program. So at Kittleson, we really value having a, a group of people from a variety of different backgrounds with different majors and perspectives that they can bring to our work. This is exemplified by the statistics that you saw earlier that Kelly shared and that JD just shared about the previous internship class, and that's highlighted on the, the left hand of this slide. So we have all these people from different backgrounds, but what do they have in common? These are folks who are passionate about transportation, they're communicative, and they're eager to learn new skills. These are also the primary characteristics that we look for in candidates. Um, we're looking for people who are passionate about transportation and recognize that it's an important part of our day-to-day -day lives and who are generally, genuinely interested in solving the issues related to transportation. We're looking for people who are communicative, and that doesn't necessarily mean extroverted, but rather people who can effectively share information with different audiences. Because a big part of who we are as consultants is communicating complex and often technical information to a wide variety of audiences. We're also looking for folks who are eager to learn new skills. The internship is fast paced, typically taking place for about three months, and each project you work on might require learning a new skill or software. And we don't require interns to come in with these skills, but we do look for candidates who are ready to hit the ground running from day one and, and start learning these new skills. So we don't really have any hard requirements related to um, the internship program and, and looking for candidates. However, we do want to note that the internship is general, generally only open to students currently enrolled in undergraduate, graduate, or PhD program. Um, and those who are graduating this upcoming year, uh, we encourage you to, to apply to, to full-time positions instead of the internship program. So now I'll just hit on some of the steps for actually expressing interest in the internship program. So if you're interested in expressing interest, it's a pretty straightforward process that is entirely through our online portal. So we've highlighted um, the link there in, in that first checkbox. Um, so you'll go to that link, um, you'll fill out an application and submit a resume and cover letter. The application will include a, a questionnaire with a couple different different questions, really trying to hit at who you are as, as a person and, and getting to know, know you a little better. Um, and we really encourage you to take your time in answering those questions because it, it really does share a lot about you beyond what a typical resume and, and cover letter um, might, might um, provide. So, and then the other note that we want to say is that applications are open now and that we do encourage you to apply early as most positions are filled by the end of the year. So once you apply online, um, we just want to give you an idea of what the actual hiring process looks like. So step one will be after you've submitted online, um, we'll have an initial screening of all the candidates um, by our, our internal hiring, hiring team. Um, from there, we'll reach out to the candidates um, to have our, our first conversation. Usually it's about two people from Kittleson. Um, and really we, we encourage you to come with questions. Um, this isn't so much of us interviewing you, but more of a conversation and an opportunity for us to learn about you and what you're looking for in an internship and for you to learn more about Kittleson and our internship program. After that, the ball will be in your court. Um, and we really ask the candidate to come back with a reflection on that conversation. So just kind of your initial thoughts, reflections, as well as any initial questions you might have. After that, we'll have a second conversation with more, more targeted staff. So that's where we'll really start getting into what your goals might be um, specifically for the internship, what offices might work, um, and kind of those specific project opportunities. From there, we again put the ball back in your court and, and let you kind of reply to us with your reflections, thoughts, um, and additional questions. Um, and from there, that's kind of the last official touch point, um, and we'll extend an offer and um, really start working to figure out those specifics 
regarding kind of start and end dates, um, who your mentor might be, living arrangements, that kind of stuff. We really approach that all on a case by case basis, um, and you'll you'll, conf you'll figure that out with your specific mentors. So, and then I think I'll just that's kind of it for our hiring process. And I'd like to to end this just by saying. If you don't get an internship this round, but still feel like Kittleson is the right spot for you, we really encourage you to apply, apply again if you're still a student next year um, or to apply for full time. We get a lot of applicants and this is a pretty competitive program. So we really want you to keep in touch if, if you feel like Kittleson is the right spot. So with that, I'll kick it back over to Kelly and we'll start the Q&A portion of our presentation. Great, thanks so much, Mark. Um, and Megan and JD. So real quick, just wanted to keep this slide up for a moment and then I'll close this out and just show our cameras, but wanted to um, have the website up for just a moment so you can take note if you didn't already get it down. So that I'm gonna stop sharing my screen um, and start sharing my video. So um, we have just a little bit less than 30 minutes for questions. So continue to submit your questions. I've seen a number come in. Um, that's great, great to see. So the first question that I was going to kick us off with tonight, I'm going to direct to Mark. Um, Mark, this question is, um, what, do the different offices of Kittleson have different transportation focuses? And we have a lot of different offices represented tonight. So maybe Mark, you can start us off and then Megan, maybe you can add to that as well. Yeah, Kelly, sure. So I guess I'll, I'll start off by saying there's no easy answer to that. To that, and the, and the short answer is no, there's no official focus of our specific offices. Um, really what we do at Kittleson and the projects we work on are, are driven by the actual individuals. So it's really up to individual staff to say, hey, I have an interest in transit planning or development services. And then they go out and, and win those projects and, and work with the rest of the team to bring that work in. And that's what, that's what you end up working on. Um, in terms of how that, translates to what an intern might work on in an office. Not all offices work on all, all projects just due to the, the interests of individuals um, and the actual work that's available. So for example, in the Boise office, we actually work on a pretty wide variety of projects. So we have about 20 folks, a little less than 20, um, and we work on development services, a lot of traffic operations, conceptual and final design, bicycle pedestrian planning, long range planning, the list goes on. Some of the other offices that are a little bit smaller and might only have, you know, four to five, four to 10 people, um, they might have a little more of a focus. So they might just, they might focus a little bit more on design or a little more on development services. Um, we typically try to place intern candidates in locations where they have projects that, um, that those, those interns are actually interested in to try to give you that in-person work. But I will also say that we do share work across offices so, for example, I work um, fairly often on projects in, in Northern California, just because that's where I'm from. Um, and that gives me the opportunity to work on certain project types like transit planning, which we don't really necessarily work on in the Boise office. So I, I think I'll end it there and, and let someone else chime in. I think you really put it put it best, Mark. Um, one thing I'll just add is, in addition to sort of following our people, some of our offices have, you know, major clients that might just keep coming back to us for similar types of work. I know in Boston, we have a really long-standing relationship with the Boston Transportation Department and the Massachusetts Department of Transportation, and so we've kind of curated a certain type of work um, that we really enjoy doing with them. But of course, when I'm interested in kind of branching out, and when we've been uh, when people want to add something new to their project workload, it's absolutely encouraged to look outside of your office and if you want to pursue something that's a little bit different or with a type of client that might not be served in your home office. Great, thanks guys. So maybe we'll move to another question. Um, JD, I'm going to direct this one to you at least to start us off. Uh, this question asks, how do interns get the experience they need for a profession in the real world? So a lot of this has to do with if you know what you are interested in and if you don't, that's honestly even better because that means you get to try a lot of different things. Um, specifically at Kittleson, there's no really 
area that you're limited to in terms of what projects that you can work on. As an intern, you get to learn on the job, which um, once you turn full time, you can still get advice and kind of mentorship along the way. But as an intern, you get a lot more leeway in learning new technical skills or theory while you're on a project, as long as that project has budget for it. In other uh, non-internship related um, ways you can get more experiences to join professional organizations, um, take your classes very seriously. If you have classes that are kind of more project focused rather than uh, written report focused, take those as if you are actually a person working in um, your municipality or uh, as a consultant. And that's essentially will translate into the professional world. Um, and a lot of your soft skills that come from either like retail jobs or just communicating in class, those also translate to skills that are valuable in the professional world or the real world, as we like to say. But you're already living in the real world. So all those skills will definitely add up and help you uh, get the job that you want. Great. Thanks. So I have another question that I'm going to direct um, to Megan this time. This question asks whether transportation uh, projects are done through the public sector, like government planning, or in another way. So maybe you can talk a little bit more. I know I touched on it, but a little more about the types of projects that we do. Yeah, absolutely. Our, our clients come from both the public and private sector, and sometimes also the nonprofit advocacy sector as well. So we do a lot of project work with um, municipalities, cities, state departments of transportation, um, sometimes county or um, metropolitan planning organizations as well. So that will encompass sort of the public side of things and that can fall into really any of our technical areas. Um, at a, at a federal level, a lot of our research efforts are done through the Federal Highway Administration, um, and other sort of research wings of the government. So again, another public sector um, client, but we also do some work for um, private companies. So the development services that Mark was talking about might be working with a, a developer to conduct a, a traffic impact study, um, looking at the impacts to the roadway network and other transportation facilities of a proposed development. So there is quite a lot of project work uh, with those sorts of private clients. And then for smaller foundations or nonprofit groups, I know in the Boston office, we do some work with those types of groups, maybe looking at um, like a feasibility for a new trail segment or something like that, where advocates might want to look into, um, you know, if, if they can successfully promote the addition of a new transportation facility or something like that. So our clients really do range across all of those sectors. Thanks. Yeah, that's helpful. I appreciate I appreciate some of those examples. Um, I just wanted to know, we're getting a number of questions about a timeline and whether they're fall internships or summer internships. So I just wanted to clarify a couple of things, maybe add on to what Mark shared. So I wanted to note how the timing that we shared is for summer 2023 internships. So our internship program is, is focused on that summer period. Um, we do occasionally have interns that fall outside of that or do more extended internships. Those are really a case-by-case -case basis. Um, one of the nice things about Kittleson, I think, is that we're really flexible. We're really focused on the individual and their needs. So if you have a specific circumstance um, or a question along that line, uh, yeah, feel, feel free to just apply and we can address some of those specific questions then or we can also follow up with some of those specific questions afterwards. Um, I also wanted to emphasize what, what Mark shared that our internship program is open to folks that are currently in school. So if you're graduating um, next May, uh, I encourage you to apply for a full-time position. Um, so another question that I wanted to, to direct to folks, maybe I'll Mark, I'll start you off on this one. Um, we had somebody ask whether Kittleson tends to keep interns on as staff or regular employees after the internship program ends. Sure, Kelly. Yeah, I can, I can answer that. Um, it's we the short answer again is is yes we do um explore that with our interns and every, pretty much every year um we, we typically have an intern class of 15 to 20 people and i'd say we, we generally have two to five come back um for a full-time position is, is just my guess if you kind of average it out um 
So, and, and typically that's a conversation that's, it's on, it's on a case by case basis. And it's a conversation that, that you'll have as an intern with your mentor. So you can kind of reflect back on the summer. Um, and basically if, if the work you did, if you, if you enjoyed it and you could see yourself doing that for a full-time career, um, and, and we see kind of a, a good fit there, then, um, that that's absolutely an opportunity that can be available. So it's not, not guaranteed by any means, um, but it's definitely something that we, we really explore with, with every intern that, that comes through our program. And, and I'll also say that there's, there's certain times where, you know, they, maybe an intern will come through, they'll go to another opportunity or they have a couple of years left at school. Um, we, we do see a lot of times where they'll come back after a couple of years, um, either from a different job or after a couple of years of school, um, and, and the door is still open um, if, if interns want to come back and kind of get in contact with Kittleson again. Great, thanks. So I had a question that asks about kind of work-life balance, both for interns and then also full-time staff at Kittleson, and what is Kittleson's perspective on kind of maintaining that work-life balance? Um, JD, maybe do you want to start us off and share a little bit about your experience over the summer, um, kind of balancing those different elements? Yeah, so I am someone who tends to overload myself quite a bit. And one thing I noticed about Kittleson um, is that everyone kept kind of scolding me anytime I took on too much. Um, and it was it was the best kind of scolding because uh, they were watching out for me and uh, they kept reminding me to put school first, understanding that a lot of interns are still finishing uh, their programs up, whether that be an undergrad or a graduate program. And just understanding your workload so that you can communicate to your project managers and uh, also being reminded to ask for help whenever you need it. Um, there's plenty of people who can support you at Kittleson or at any other uh, internship that you look for, as long as you make that known and share whenever you do need assistance. Um, and I know that may be hard coming in because you want to know everything. You want to be able to handle everything on your own. Um, but in the long run, it's so much better to ask for help whenever you need it. And that's one of the biggest lessons I've learned uh, during my internship at Kittleson, I was able to rely on my both my intern cohort and also, again, the amazing network of people that I've uh, gained from this internship. Great. Thanks. Yeah, thanks for sharing that. And um, maybe I'll just add my perspective to that as well. So one of the phrases that I've heard people here at Kittleson use is work-life rhythm and that kind of understanding that Everybody goes through different stages of life, um, personally and also professionally. And at some times, uh, work might take more of a front seat. Sometimes it takes more of a back seat, and that there's kind of a natural ebb and flow that that can occur. Um, and I think, similar to JD, one of the biggest things I learn is to to ask for help and to rely on the folks around me. And one of the things that I most value about Kittleson is the the people here and the relationships and being able to to lean on um, on others and to to really find those team dynamics that lead lead to a successful end result. Um, one of our values here at Kittleson is outward focus, and I've really seen that play out on a lot of projects where folks are really trying to do our best to create the best product for our client, for our communities, but in the while getting there to also really create the best learning experience for people on the project. So I really appreciate it when I first started at Kettleson of people looking for opportunities for me to, to learn and to grow and to maybe put me in environments that I maybe would have gotten somewhere else, whether that meant getting to present at a public meeting in my first year at Kettleson or somebody really taking the time when they reviewed one of my memos, not just to kind of get it out to the client and mark it up as quickly as possible, but to really be thoughtful in giving me comments and feedback that would help me learn and grow. So not just focus on the end product, but really focused on helping each other um, be successful. Um, so a question that we had asked that I thought would be interesting um, is recognizing that the summer is still um, so many months away. What would you suggest that an intern or potential candidate do between now and that time to really best set themselves up for success, whether that's an internship at Kittleson or, or somebody else? How can they use their time at school um, in the most meaningful way possible? And I, I know, J.D., you just answered a, a, the last question, but I might still put this one to you because you might be um, 
best best suited given uh, where you where you currently sit to answer this question? So a lot of the uh, whenever I talk to some of my peers at uh, school about internships, summer does seem really far away, and if you're not uh, set on an internship already, um, it does feel like a lot of things are up in the air. And with that, I would just say keep in contact with the people that you're expressing interest to or you're wanting to get uh, the firm that you're wanting to get hired at or the uh, city or county that you want to work for. And um, just maintaining those lines of communications are really important. And honestly, just keep um, keep working um, at whatever you're doing. And uh, again, I always stress this because networking to me seems so important. I know it's a scary word sometimes for people, especially for introverts. I'm very introverted and I think networking is really cool because you're just making friends essentially, um, but in a more professional world. And I think having that network and just uh, continuing to talk to people, um, make sure you keep up kind of just keep in check with um, all the all the internships that you want. And uh, with Gittleson, I think Gittleson does a great job at keeping, uh, at like sending reminders or uh, checking in every now and then to see if you're still interested. And I think it falls on both the, the student and the firm if they're interested in having you as an intern. Great, thanks. I've, got, I've gotten a couple of questions that are kind of on a similar vein that are kind of asking, how is the internship program different if you're an undergraduate or a graduate, graduate student? or that are asking, is it better to come into the internship program kind of as a blank state, blank slate without a lot of experience, so Kettleson can mold you from the start, or is it better to come in with a little bit more experience and already have gotten your feet wet in the transportation field? So um, maybe Mark, you can answer, answer that question uh, first. Sure, and I guess just to clarify, the, was the question is, is one better than the other? I didn't catch the yeah, first part yeah, of that. Yeah, sorry. I kind of formed a couple of questions together there. I think, yeah, is it better to come in as an undergraduate or graduate, or how does Kettleson kind of treat those uh, those different backgrounds differently through our internship program? Sure. Okay. Yeah. So there's there's um, ne neither situation is better, and and we've had interns from from both situations that are that are incredibly successful. Um, and I think I'll just go back to kind of those those qualities that we look for in candidates. And those are people who are passionate about transportation, um, communicative, and um, eager to learn new skills. And I think that that last one especially is is what we look look for in terms of just evaluating someone and their their technical skills. We're not really looking for people who they've you know designed roadways in AutoCAD or they've they've analyzed um, intersections in Synchro. We're we're looking for people who can who can jump on a project and and just learn these skills from day one um, because. I mean, even as full-time staff, I'm I'm still learning new skills on every single day. Um, I recently started doing travel demand modeling. You know, I've been working for five years and I've never done that before. Um, and and I I think it's it's been a successful project. And and that's more less because of previous skills I had, but more just from being able to jump into something and learn it fast. So I, I guess I'll I'll just leave it at saying, yeah, past experiences in transportation isn't really isn't really key um, to a successful intern internship. Great, thanks, that's helpful. Um, so a question maybe that gets a little bit more um, personal or gives you guys an opportunity to tell more of your, your past. Um, we had somebody ask, how did you discover that you were passionate about transportation? Um, Megan, do you wanna kick us off on that one? Sure. I think for me, it was um, perhaps a, a cliche way, but I had the opportunity to study abroad in Copenhagen, Denmark in my undergraduate, uh, in, in undergrad, and just fell in love with being able to bike everywhere and take amazing transit everywhere. And I also took a class with uh, an urban designer, and she just kind of changed the way I thought about things. So I knew after that that I, I was interested in that field. Um, and it took me a while to understand that transportation planning was even a thing. <laughs> um, it just wasn't a career that, you know, you necessarily hear about uh, growing up or even maybe from to the end of college, because that's what it was for me. I learned it was a career um, my last year in school. 
So that was kind of where I came from. I had been studying environmental science. I knew that was a really broad field that could go in a lot of directions. And I felt like transportation was one that felt pretty concrete and it felt like um, a, a really interesting and fulfilling way to address some of those uh, you know, sustainability concerns um, and, and on a really large scale, so. Great. Mark, do you want to share um, share some of your perspective on that or your experience getting in transportation? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, for me, I um, came from really just a technical background in school, so studying civil engineering. Um, and when I started my undergrad, I had really no idea what the transportation realm was beyond you design roadways, probably. Um, <laughs> so, and I, I think as a student, I was always, you know, more on the wanted to get into structural and build things. But then um, after learning more about the transportation um, profession, just through my involvement in Institute and Transportation Engineers and, and some of these other professional groups, I found out that there was a lot more to the um, profession than just the technical side. And that really appealed to me. Um, and I and I thought it, it was really cool to, to work in a job where um, you deal with policy and, and politics and government, um, all that stuff, but can still relate it to the technical kind of engineering side. Um, so that's really what what drew me towards it. Um, and what I do day to day now, I'm working on some projects that are 100% just engineering, getting in the numbers, and then others that are just purely focused on like transportation policy. And so I, I really enjoy that that variety. Thanks. So we had another um, couple of questions come in on the process side that I wanted to address. Um, we had some folks ask if Kittleton is coming to their university to visit, is it better to go ahead and apply now or to wait until that visit happens? And I would encourage you to go ahead and apply. Um, as, as this individual noted, yeah, Kittleton will be having an in-person presence at a number of schools this year, and you can learn more about that on our website. But I would encourage folks to, to go ahead and get their application um, in now. A lot of that information gets shared, so there's no need to, to wait um, until Kittleton comes to your school. Great. So, um, JD, a question directed for you. I know you talked a lot about some of your takeaways from your experience over the summer and some of the cool projects that you worked on and sessions that you were involved in. But um, if you have to, if you'd have to uh, sum it up into what you felt like you learned most through your your summer with Kittleson, um, what what would you say, or what were what would be like that key takeaway that you would you would carry forward? I think for me key takeaway would be not to be afraid to ask questions. Um, I don't have an engineering background, so sometimes some of the stuff that Mark talks about just goes over my head. Um, and I think a lot of students who come from uh, non like hard science backgrounds may feel similar to this, but I think knowing enough to have a voice at the table and to, to know enough to be dangerous in the transportation world, uh, dangerous being a good thing in this sense and not a safety concern, um, <laughs> is, is great. And even though um, I do not have a civil engineering or mechanical engineering background, I can still uh, provide insight to a lot of projects that deal with safety and roadway design because of the things that I learned at Kittleson and because of how willing um, Kittleson staff were to teaching me a lot of these things. Um, and I think that's one of the biggest differences that sets Kittleson aside for me, at least compared to some of my other internships, is a very strong mentorship program that sets interns up for success. Um, I know it's it doesn't feel handholdy at all. Um, and it's really how uh, much you want to interact and how uh, much you want to make up your internship as well. So key takeaway is just don't be afraid to ask questions and don't be afraid of not knowing something. Great, thanks. That's helpful. Um, and a question to direct to Megan and Mark, since you guys are a little bit further along in your career with Gittleson, what have you learned over the last few years that you wish you had known um, as uh, as a student or in the place of somebody listening to this webinar. Megan, do you want to go first? Yeah, I mean, I'll just say 
One of the wonderful benefits of interning while you're in school is still having school to go after that internship. Um, I think for me, I, I had one more year afterwards and my internship really helped frame, you know, what I wanted to get out of that last year. But, you know, I would say I, there's probably a lot more I could have taken advantage of just being on a campus and having access to those sorts of resources. So I would say kind of take that internship experience and, and let it, like we said, we hope it gives you um, career clarity, but also use that to, to plan out your sort of remaining years in school and really to get the most out of that as you, as you transition into the career afterward. Great. Mark, do you want to share your thoughts? Sure. Yeah, I, I think for me, um, you know, if I had to go back eight years or so, um, I, I wish I had put, in, put more focus on uh, the non-technical side of, of learning and some of those more personal connections. So, and I, I guess how that translates to advice is I would say really take kind of like JD was saying that that networking, it's a scary word, but at the end of the day, yeah, it's just, just meeting people, making friends who, who kind of share those same professional interests as you. Um, because it, it really pays off in the long run. And I, I definitely didn't, everyone told me it, definitely didn't take it seriously. But now I, I look back at some of the connections I made um, back in school through ITE, um, people I met in internships, um, and we're still in touch today. Um, and it's really cool. I, you know, even yesterday, I think I had a, a call with someone who I, I went to school with, who worked for a consultant for a couple of years, and now they just shifted to a, he's a city and traffic engineer at a, a city now in California. Um, and yeah, it, we haven't kept in touch at all the past five years, but I was still able to pick up the phone and just see how he was doing and, and learn about what he's working on. So I would just say, don't, don't discount those kind of the, the personal connections and, and take that into account when just looking for internships and, and other opportunities. Great, so we just have a couple more minutes. I'll have um, one last question to close us out. A number of folks have asked more about the application process or how they can really make themselves stand out in that application process. And maybe Mark, I'll ask you to touch on this a little bit more because I, I know you shared some information in your slides about what the application process looks like and what, what we generally look for. But um, in your experience, kind of reviewing applications that come in or um, helping have discussions with intern candidates, what would you say is a way that somebody can really make themselves, um, make themselves stick out during that process? Sure, I, I, think, I think some big items are, are showing, number, number one, that you actually are interested in, in transportation and not just looking for an internship. Um, and, and relating that back to Kittleson as, as best you can. So do, do a little research, you know, t talk about what you might have learned from these webinars, what you've seen from our website, maybe what you've learned from, from other companies' websites and kind of bring those, those reflections or kind of what you observe to your application or, or questionnaire. Um, and I, I feel like that's what, what often stands out is, is people who have said, I'm interested in Kittleson for X, X and X, not just I'm interested in Kittleson because I'm, I'm looking for an internship. So I would, I would say that's the best, my best piece of advice. Great, thank you. Yeah, I appreciate you sharing that. And I guess I would, I would add from, um, yeah, the time that I've spent kind of reviewing candidates and talking to, to candidates, I think the number one thing that really sticks out to me is when somebody is clearly um, proactive and really has that curiosity and the desire to make the most of an internship. Um, I'd always tell folks when I was talking to them that I think that an internship at Kittleson is really what you make of it. Um, just like a career here at Kittleson is really what you make of it. Um, the doors are open, the opportunities are endless, um, and they're really there to seize and to be taken advantage of. And I really enjoyed and flourished in this environment and the opportunity to see things that I want to change and to go after them and to really make, um, make my own individual mark and path here at Kittleson. So I always look for that from, from uh, applicants, folks that are just really eager and curious and are really going to, to take those opportunities and um, to achieve as much as they can and kind of experience the internship to the fullest. Um, so with that, I'm gonna wrap us up. I wanted to thank everyone for joining us today. I really enjoyed the discussion and all the um, questions that were brought in. Thanks for, thanks for providing those. Um, the webinar has been recorded and we'll be emailing it out to all the attendees. And as Mark noted, um, we're now accepting applications. We typically identify most interns by 
the end of December. Um, so really encourage you to, to go ahead and, and apply if today's webinar has resonated with you and you see um, you see benefit of a, an internship with Kittleson. So thank you again. Um, I really appreciate you spending part of the evening with us and I hope everybody has a good evening. Thanks.